Hello, and welcome to another episode of Team Blush. This is part four in the KA24E Turbo series. Unfortunately, as you can see, we are not working on the engine. We still have yet to get our ARP head studs that are needed to continue that process. But fortunately, there is more to be done to get the car prepared for this engine swap. So today we are going to be relocating the battery from the engine bay in the car to the trunk because we are going to be needing an intercooler for the turbo setup. And with an intercooler comes intercooler piping. Our current battery location is going to get in the way of that. So we need to do a battery relocation. This should be a pretty straightforward process, so we're just going to jump right into it. We have a few questions on where some of these things are going to go and how they're going to mount, but other than that, it should just be leading this battery cable through the car to the trunk and mounting our new Odyssey Extreme battery. Let's get right into it. We will see you there. So let's just go ahead and get this battery out of the way so that we have more room to work with what we are going to be doing. So now that we've gotten that battery aside and out of the way, we can go ahead and start taking apart the positive side of our battery cable and start getting these wires isolated that are feeding from our positive side of the battery cable here. All right, now with this undone and with some new gloves, we couldn't operate the phone controls with our other gloves. With these gloves, we can. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get this apart. We have three different little bundles of wires here. We only need to worry about two of them. So we have right here, these two wires and plugs, we are gonna cut off these plugs, but these two wires control the power for our fuse box and our ECM, I believe. We were told by a lot of you on Instagram, thank you for helping out, and our buddy that these are fusible links and that is what they run to. We have our main starter wire positive cable right here. And then we have these two red cables right here. And this just goes back to our subwoofer. And this controls the power for our head unit. We do not have to worry about these because we are going to be running these to the trunk along with our battery. So we don't have to worry about putting new terminals on these. Let's go ahead and first worry about our fusible links. We're gonna get these cut and we are going to crimp a new lug onto these. With those plugs cut off and the wires stripped back, you can see that it broke out into these three wires here. One of the plugs was these two small wires and one of the plugs was this larger one. It doesn't really matter the orientation of any of these because all that these were doing was seeing 12 volts from the battery. So, we're not gonna necessarily recommend you do this the way that we're gonna do it. There is more than likely a better way to do this for future-proofing your own wiring. 
for potentially troubleshooting in the future and other stuff that may occur with the electrical system. But what we're gonna do is we are simply going to take these three wires, bundle them together, and we are going to simply put a single lug on these. Again, because these were only seeing 12 volts and that's all they care about, this should work perfectly fine. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to put our single lug on here with a piece of heat shrink. We'll actually go get that here in just a second. We have a nice hydraulic lug crimper that we are going to use to give this a solid connection. Once we get that crimped, then we'll go ahead and we will get the heat shrink heated on this area here where we had to cut back a little bit on that old wire sheathing and it will look a lot better. So we'll get right to that. Okay, so there is the first terminal that we had to redo for this project. So let's go ahead and sit that aside. Next, we are going to cut and do the same to our starter wire here. It's going to be much of the same, so we're just going to do a little time lapse. We'll see you once this is all ready to go. And there we go. We are going to put some electrical tape on this to make sure that this sheath doesn't move around. But that is our two main power cables that we needed to put new terminals on. And we'll show you why we needed to put these new terminals on these wires. So the new lugs that we put on these cables are going to allow us to tie into this right here. This is known as a power distribution block and it's gonna go something like this. So we're going to take our original positive cables that we just made and we are going to connect them to this long battery cable right here just like this we're just going to sandwich these all on this little power distribution stud well you get the idea so this is how it's going to look and then we're going to go ahead and run this entire cable all the way back to the trunk of the vehicle where we will then mount the battery but the question right now is where we are going to go ahead and mount this little block here. So off camera, we're gonna look around the engine bay, see where these cables will actually stretch to, and we'll see about getting this mounted. We will see you in just a second. 
All right, after having removed the coolant reservoir from this area of the engine bay, we were kind of looking around for a place to mount our distribution block. And we found this hole right here. This was already there when we were looking, but the only thing that we needed to do was enlarge this hole by just a hair. We did that so that we can take this little riv nut and place it in this hole and it fits perfectly with very little modification to the chassis, so that is really convenient. Now we can go ahead and once we rivet this little rib nut into this hole, we should be able to mount it right about here. And one thing that you don't wanna do when mounting these distribution blocks is mount it in an area where something could fall onto it. You don't want to ground out anything and potentially cause any electrical issues. So you usually want to put this in a place that is covered. This may not be the permanent mounting place for this distribution block, but for right now, with the wiring harness how it is, this is our best bet. In terms of anything potentially falling on this distribution block lead, it's very unlikely because once we put our coolant reservoir back into the vehicle, it is really going to shroud this area and it's just very unlikely that anything will fall on it. So we're gonna go ahead and get the riv nut riveted into this hole. We might drill another hole if this is not securely mounted once we tighten it down on this one riv nut, but we think that'll be enough and we're gonna go ahead and get that done for you on a time lapse. And there we go, we got our little power distribution block right here all mounted up and it is not going anywhere. This is very securely held down. So we're actually only going to use one bolt right now. Uh, this is not gonna be the permanent mounting place for this block. We've decided that uh, once we pull the engine and have access to getting this harness a little bit further out of the engine bay. We're actually going to mount it up under here. That'll be a lot cleaner, but for now this works. Our next step is going to be to run the wire that is going to go from this distribution block all the way to the trunk. We're thinking that we are going to go ahead and run that behind here, down along this channel and go down through this hole in the fender here. Running that through the inside of this fender, we're going to meet up with a grommet underneath the wheel well liner back here, and that's going to feed into the interior of the vehicle. For now, we're going to go ahead and get this wheel well liner out, and you'll see a little time lapse of us doing that. In the process of starting to get this wheel well liner out, we noticed over here there was this little new addition poking out and we were wondering what the heck that was. That is our riv nut and our bolt holding on to our distribution block. Turns out that convenient little hole that we found in the engine bay was actually one of the holes that was originally used for one of those little plastic tabs that holds on to the wheel well liner. Since we were missing ours, it looked like a very convenient hole to use for that riv nut. And while it still was, this could potentially cause issues for you if you are super low and have a super wide tire. Again, this isn't going to be the permanent solution for mounting our distribution block, but you can see that if you do end up using that like we did, you could potentially have some issues. So we're gonna get back to getting this wheel well liner off.
pro tip before you make your vehicle inoperable electrically make sure to turn the tire if you are going to be taking a wheel well liner out because as you can see even with this stubby little screwdriver we need to get this little tab out and uh yeah she's toyed um we're gonna have to figure this out some other way we'll get back to you once we get these little tabs out <laughs> don't be dumb like us make sure to turn the tire before you start cutting all of your electrical out okay so the fender liner here has been all taken out and we can get a good look at this grommet that we are going to be using for our new power wire as you can see there's a few other cables that we have routed through here we were originally routing these wires through a grommet in the door hinge over here we're going to probably look at relocating those and running them through this grommet we originally didn't want to cut this grommet just because it didn't seem like the proper way to do it at the time but since we're going to be running this new power cable through this grommet just because we don't want to run it through the door hinge it's too large we're going to go ahead and cut this and we're going to run these two wires through that as well so off camera we're going to go and get this cut then we'll show you as we try and pull that new wire through here and we're going to be running it up alongside the wiring harness up here we're going to try and tuck it as best as we possibly can up through here and then if you can see where that foam is right there there's a little bit of a gap we think we might be able to sneak our power cable through there so we're going to try that but if not you can see down there is where that original hole was that we were planning on using but for now we're going to try and get it through there so we're going to try and make as clean of a cut in this as we possibly can and then we'll move into the interior of the vehicle to see what the back side of this looks like our hole has been cut in the grommet and as you can see we've fed this flat blade screwdriver through that hole so that we can see on the other side where this is let's move into the interior of the vehicle as you can see we've gotten a little carried away but we removed that trim piece at the bottom of the door right there so that we could remove the trim piece that hides where the ecu is mounted over here in the corner of the passenger footwell we removed the ecu from its bracket and from its wiring right here to get it out of the way and now we're going to attempt to show you where that grommet is up underside of the dash okay so we are under the dashboard of the vehicle and this is a super hard angle to get i'm sorry but right up in here right there where the light is shining you can see the blade of the flat-headed screwdriver right there. That's where our grommet is. So we're going to have to do our best to try and feed our power cable through there. And we'll show you that process as well as we can. All right, so here is our plan. This is one end of our very long power cable that we got. As you can see, we've already crimped a lug onto it and put heat shrink on it. We are going to feed this lug first through the hole that we made, and we're going to probably lubricate this with some WD-40 once we have this fit through that hole in the grommet we're gonna attempt to use this hole in the lug here to help pull it through 
that grommet and down into the interior of the car. We're honestly not sure if this is going to work. It's more than likely going to be a huge pain. So we're going to stop filming, get to it, and get this thing in the interior of the vehicle. There we go. There is our power cable run through the grommet of the inside of that fender. Uh, that, good luck with that. Man, that was ridiculous to get through there. Uh, there's another grommet on the firewall that you could possibly use. We've seen other people use those, but we did not want to cut into that one. Um, at least this one under the fender is hidden so we can cut into it and people really aren't going to see it even though we're going to know that it's cut. Um, yeah, just good luck with that. Uh, we were able to get it through that little cut in the grommet just barely enough to show this little lug hole from the other side. We grabbed it just as little as we could with this little allen wrench like this and we really couldn't hold on to it and pull it through so we hooked it on there and then we used a pair of pliers grabbed our allen wrench and then pulled it through with quite a bit of force uh, you may want to be careful because this is where all of your ecu wiring and that stuff is if you're not comfortable with it again there's that one little grommet in the engine bay that you could potentially use but we didn't want to now that we've gotten this wire in through the grommet we're going to go ahead and tuck it as nicely as we can so we're going to go ahead and get the carpet up on this edge we're probably going to pull the seat because we're going to have to get back behind here in a little bit but for now we're just going to pull this edge up and snake that wiring until we get back here So you just seen, we took out the passenger seat here and we took out the rear seat in the car. We've really just been getting to it and we've run our power wire here underneath the carpet. Let me see if I can get the light over here so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, right here, you can see we've run that wire through the carpet down here by the sill with that carpet run through the sill down here you can see it's coming out right here we are currently working on getting it behind this trim piece right here we're going to run that up and possibly under the carpet right here we're going to take it all the way across because as you can see back here where our battery box is, this is where we're going to be mounting that battery. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, so it was a very tedious process, but we have finally gotten our power lead run down over here. We were able to tuck it underneath the backside of the seat down here. You can't see it, but it's tucked down there. Then on the back side of this sheet metal and in between this trim, we ran the lead up and up to this little hole right here. We were able to tuck it even further back behind all of this sheet metal. And as you can see, that positive lead leads us to where we have decided we're going to be mounting our battery box. 
A lot of people tend to put it on the opposite side of the trunk where the fuel pump and some other things are, but given the size of this battery box and this perfectly flat part of the trunk, we have decided on putting it over here. It's a little bit more of a pain as you've seen to run that positive lead over here, but we think this is going to be the cleanest setup. Before we go ahead and mount this battery box, we're just very quickly going to find a place for our ground cable. We're thinking probably one of these two bolts right here will do. We're just gonna go ahead and strip back a little bit of the paint around one of those bolts and get our ground cable connected. So we'll get that done really quick and then we can go ahead and look into mounting this battery box. And just like that, we got our ground cable connected to the chassis. Just kind of snaked it around and it is coming out at the same spot that our positive cable is coming out here. We're going to go ahead and put the trim panel back on in the trunk here so that we know how far to the left we can actually go when we are mocking up our battery box for permanent mounting. With the trim all buttoned up, the carpet laid back out, and these leads just checked to make sure that they are actually going to reach the posts. Let's go ahead and get this battery box mounted. We're gonna go ahead and get the battery out of the way. We just kind of wanted to show off how it is going to look once all said and done. We think it looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. Then we're going to begin marking the holes down here so that we can begin burning through the carpet and drilling our holes in the trunk for our riv nuts. Looking at how we wanted to mount our battery box here on the bottom of the trunk, we notice right here, this had a bolt through it, which was right here. This bolt does not seemingly have any use, so we're going to utilize it for our battery box, and that's going to give us a nice spot where we can go ahead and mark our other holes for drilling. And there we go. It's pretty hard to see on camera, but we have a drill point right here, a drill point right here, and a drill point right here. So we're gonna go underneath the car, make sure that is not going to interfere with anything that may be in the way. And if not, we're going to go ahead and send it. Right, there we go those are our three holes drilled that took quite a long time if you are going to do this yourself definitely buy the correct drill bits we just kind of tooled around in our toolbox for whatever drill bits seem to work uh, it took a long time and as you can see the holes that we achieved with those drill bits weren't the greatest they work and especially since we're doing rib nuts it does hide it but for time's sake just buy the correct drill bits to drill through metal we went ahead and confirmed that all of our bolts thread through these rib nuts with our battery box on top of here so we're going to go ahead and finalize these rib nuts by crimping them down
with those riv nuts finalized and crimped to the bottom of our trunk here, there is only one more thing that we really need to do to finalize the mounting of this battery box. To make the battery box installation look the cleanest that it possibly can, we are going to be burning holes through our carpet and then mounting that battery box on top of this carpet. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to take this very small nail, we're going to find where each rib nut is underneath the carpet. We're going to run that nail through the carpet where we can feel the hole with our finger. Now that we have that nail put in the carpet where we are wanting to burn it, we can take another one of our rivets to see how big of a hole we need to burn into the carpet. Sizing that as well as we can to a socket on a very long extension, we are going to be heating up this sacrificial socket here to as hot as you can possibly get it with a butane torch or whatever method you can find to heat this up. Once we heat this up off camera, we are going to center it as best as we possibly can on top of that nail. And then we are going to push our socket down as firm as we can onto the carpet. Theoretically, and I say theoretically because this is the first time that we will have done this process, but theoretically this should burn a hole through the carpet in a really clean manner. And in the process, due to how hot that this socket will be, it will actually cauterize the threads around it so you won't have to worry about any fraying of the carpet in the future. So off camera, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing red hot and we'll see how this process goes. All right, so there we go. That worked pretty well. As you can see, it's a perfect hole for our little rib nut here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do that with these other two. Well, rather, we're gonna do it for these other three and then we'll get right back with you. So there we have it with those holes burned through the carpet. We were able to thread our bolts through and full disclosure off camera for a good hour or so we were trying to fix some issues that we had when trying to thread our bolts in they threaded in perfectly fine before we crimped down the riv nuts but once we crimped them down we did notice that these two bolts up here would not thread in without cross threading it seems like when we were drilling the rib nuts, the drill bit must have walked even just a few millimeters on each one of these holes. And while it was able to thread through with the wiggle room before crimping, now they will not go ahead and thread. So we've been trying to drill these holes out a little bit larger to get maybe enough room to thread those in but it looks like we do not have the equipment to do that in a clean manner. We are gonna have to take this to our buddy's place to get these milled uh, like a slot or something in here so that we can get those bolts threaded in nice. Another issue that we found is that this hole on the battery box down here is too small for our OEM bolt that we wish to reuse. So we'll also have to get that drilled out at our friend's mill. With those issues aside, this battery box is mounted firmly to the bottom of the trunk here. And we can begin looking at getting our battery in this box. Those of you with keen eyes may have noticed that we were kind of dumb. And <laughs> we put this lug on the end of our positive cable 
this obviously is not going to work with our battery so we do need to get a terminal onto this this lug did help us get the cable through the firewall so we're going to chalk it up as genius in those terms and move on so let's go ahead and get this terminal onto this cable we pretty simply went ahead and got our positive terminal onto our positive lead here and this is just some cheapo terminal off of amazon it has a few extras so that we can run our subwoofer wiring and our amp wiring off of it whether or not it's good or not we do not know we haven't used this before but it uh, definitely looks like it is going to be pretty convenient in terms of our wiring speaking of wiring we've gotten our positive cable and our ground cable all ready to go back here to hook up to our battery the last thing that we need to button up before testing our new trunk relocated battery setup is to go back to where we left this positive cable under the fender we still need to finish running that through the fender and into the engine bay where we will crimp a lug onto it and hook it up to our power distribution block so we'll see you there as you can see we've gone ahead and buttoned up getting our power lead here all the way up along the wiring harness and we made sure that the power lead right here is actually above where the wiring harness sits because if you're super low there's a potential that your tire can rub through your harness most people will go ahead and tuck this harness up further in the fender but we're not at that point yet so this should be good enough for us right now in terms of that positive battery cable and then right up here you can see that we just snake that wire through the fender and into the engine bay so here is the finalized product uh, we still have to properly mount our coolant reservoir here but this is how everything is going to look as you can see we've already gone ahead and crimped the lug onto that positive lead we figured you've seen us crimp more than enough leads onto these battery wires in this video so we went ahead and did it off camera we have it connected to our distribution block and don't worry this right here is not actually touching the power distribution block i don't think that would do anything but there is definitely clearance here for everything to not be touching so we're just going to go ahead and start buttoning up things we still need to plug our ecu back in because we moved it out of the way to get our power lead all the way back through the interior once we have the ecu plugged in i believe it is about time to see if the car still has power it would suck to have gone through all of this rigmarole and not have power but we have faith that it is all going to be good so once we get everything buttoned up we will bring you inside of the car to see if we have successfully done a battery relocation all right it has come down to it we are ready to test and see if we are about to burn the car to the ground let's go ahead and get our positive terminal on here we shut the trunk just a little bit to make it as dark as possible but since the trunk is open we should see a light in the trunk here if everything goes as planned so we're going to very quickly just touch the ground to the negative terminal and look out for that light in the trunk yeah not sure if you yeah you can see it a little bit on the video okay this is nerve wracking i cannot tell you okay we're gonna go check the engine bay and smell for anything burning but yeah an update on the situation we're not smelling any weird smells nothing seems to be going wrong 
As you can see with the passenger door open, the dome light is turned on and you've seen in the trunk, there was the trunk light on. So we're going to go ahead and put our key in the car and we have a little voltmeter right here. We're gonna see if we are seeing 12 volts, which I don't see why we wouldn't be, but this is very nerve wracking considering we've never done this before. So we want to double check with that before trying to start the car. As you can see as well, the footwell lights in the driver's seat have turned on. Gauges on the dash have turned on and yes, 12.5 volts. That's super exciting. Let's see if we can get the car to start. Oh, seat belt. And all right, there we go. We're super excited about that. We're going to get the car turned off because we do not have our coolant reservoir actually plumbed right now. We don't want to get a lot of coolant all over the ground, but we'll see you in just a second in the trunk to give you our outro. Well, there we go. It seems like everything worked out in the end. That was very nerve wracking there towards the end of this video. Just dealing with electrical stuff is always super scary, even if it's something as simple as a battery relocation. As always, if you reach the end of this video, thanks a ton for watching to this point and following along on the journey. We hope that this was informational to you. If you ended up wanting to do this yourself on your own vehicle, and we wanted to thank the viewers and subscribers of the channel of which we just hit 300 for the information for this video. If you are over on our Instagram, you will have seen that we posted a couple of posts asking questions about some of the aspects of this video. So if you'd like to reach out over there on Instagram, please go ahead and check us out. We are at team.blush. You'll see that on the screen right here. We love talking to all of you, whether or not it's just talking about your own builds. If you have questions about this build, or even if we are reaching out, asking questions for a potential video that we're working on. Instagram is a super good way to get into contact with us. And with that said, I think we're going to close it out. Thanks a ton for watching. We hope you have a good day or night, depending on where you are at and what time it is for you while you're watching this video. And as always, take it easy.